comrades and friends, it's a great honor to be invited to deliver a message of solidarity to the anti-imperialist platform taking place this coming weekend in Paris. There are two questions these days which confront the international working class movement more than any other. First and foremost is the question of war. And secondly, is the question of the cost of living crisis, which is facing hundreds of millions of proletarians and oppressed people all over the world. First, the question of war. The question of war is very important, not only from the point of view of theory, but from the point of view of practice. In the last hundred years, the two world wars plus Dozens of mini wars made waged by imperialism against oppressed people have claimed the lives of more than 120 million people. They have wounded and maimed many more and destroyed huge amounts of wealth of society. So we are dealing with the question of war today, not just abstractly, not because of its history, but because of the war that is around us all over the, the place. The present phase of the war has been going on since the attack on Yugoslavia and the dismember of, dismember of that country through half a dozen wars in the Middle East from Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Libya, and, and now y y Ukraine. The war in Ukraine is a continuation of those wars and it continues its devastating march. It's not a war of Ukrainian people against the Russian people, nor is it a war of the Russian people against Ukrainian people. This war is being waged by Western imperialism led by United States imperialism against the Republic of Russia and secondly, also in preparation, is the war against the People's Republic of China. Confining ourselves to the war in Ukraine first, this war is not something that started six months ago, i.e. in February 19, 2022, with the launch of the special military operation by Russia. It started actually in 2014, if not earlier. It's a war that has been going on ever since the counter-revolutionary coup in Ukraine, which overthrew the legitimately elected government of President Yanukovych and established a fascist regime, a regime which has been waging war against its own people in the Donetsk and the Lugansk republics. That war started because the people of Lugansk and Donetsk did not want to live under the conditions of fascism that were imposed by the Maidan coup. They declared their independence and since then they have been shelled constantly and more than 14,000 lives have been claimed by the artillery practiced by the Ukrainian fascist government against the people of these two republics, Donetsk and Lugansk. Not a single bourgeois newspaper had anything to say about that. Now that the war is going on, there are all kinds of stories about Russia committing atrocities. In fact, the atrocities are all on the other side. When people discuss the question of war, what they really forget as Lenin constantly said, they must not forget, and that is the question of the class nature of the war. When you decide, what is this war about? You must look at the classes that are waging the war. You must look at the history of these classes, what policies they pursued prior to the commencement of, of the war. And it's only then that you can decide whether any of the parties deserves the support of the working people and the oppressed people. 
if you look at the question of Russia and Ukraine, Russia has been the target of NATO aggression, ever, if not earlier, ever since the collapse of the Soviet Union. Contrary to the promises made by, by NATO, NATO has been creeping towards the borders of Russia and, and, and listing in its ranks the former members of the socialist bloc from, of the Warsaw Pact, as well as former republics of the Soviet Union. And a point was reached when NATO wanted to bring Georgia and Ukraine into NATO. And the Russians said that was a dead red line and they would not accept their incorporation into NATO. The Western countries absolutely refused to discuss with Russia the questions of security of, of, of Russia. What is more, they continued to supply weaponry to the Ukrainian reactionary government. Ukraine may not be a member of NATO, but NATO has become come to come to, 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 to Ukraine. Ukraine has the largest NATO army in Europe and it's well armed by American imperialism and its satellites in West, West, Western Europe. It's been supplied with tens of billions pounds worth of weapon, wep, weaponry and it's been supplied with a lot of economic aid. Intelligence gathering is done on behalf of the Ukrainian regime by the United States and by, by, by NATO countries. They have sent mercenaries to fight in that war against, against Russia. And the purpose of that war is to break up Russia, divide it into smaller, more easily digestible parts. That is the nature of the war. Now, in our, adopting our attitude towards this war, do we support Russia? Do we support Ukraine, which effectively means supporting NATO? Or do we support nobody and saying, fire on both your houses and it's an inter-imperialist war? Now, it is the position, stance of my party, the Communist Party of Great Britain, Marxist, Leninist, that this war is not an inter-imperialist war. It's a war waged by imperialism, led by the United States against the Russian Federation. Ukrainian people are simply being used as cannon fodder in, the, in, the, in, this, in this war. One can feel sorry for the Ukrainian people, but the blame for loss of lives, Ukrainian or Russian, lies first with the Ukrainian government, which allows itself to be used as a pawn by imperialism. Secondly, it lies primarily with the NATO countries who are waging this war. They have all the democratic rhetoric that they want freedom, they want Ukraine to have the right to choose which bloc it shall join, etc. But actually, if you look at their policy, since this war, like any other war, is a continuation of the policy, what was the policy that NATO countries were pursuing? It was a policy for domination over every country. Millions of dead Iraqis mil and, and, and Afghanis and Libyans and Syrians and many other people and now Ukraine and Russia are an eloquent proof of the fact that NATO is seeking not liberty or de democracy, it's seeking domination. In the circumstances, Russia may be a capitalist country, but it is my party's stance Russia is not an imperialist country. Russia is trying to defend its territory against imperialism's onslaught. And therefore, in this war, we are duty bound to appeal to the proletariat of our countries to support Russia in this war. And if they are in imperialist countries, not to support their own imperialist bourgeoisie. Now, we in the CPGBML, like revolutionaries anywhere, are not pacifists. We're not against all wars. There are wars we support. There are just wars that deserve our support. And one of these just wars is a war waged by Russia in its defense against NATO. The wars that we support are wars of national liberation, of the oppressed people against imperialism. We support the wars of the 
proletariat against the bourgeoisie for its overthrow. We support the, vi the wars of socialist countries against Im imperialism, but we do not support the unjust wars. If there are unjust wars, we are against th those wars. And this unjust war today is being waged by NATO countries against Russia. Wars are, on the question of war, there are distortions. One distortion is to turn an inter-imperialist war into a war for defense of the fatherland, which is what happened during the First World War, when all the opportunists went over to their bourgeoisie and decided to fight on the side of their bourgeoisie and kill their class brothers, brethren on the, on the other side. The other distortion is to turn a non-imperialist war by one side against an imperialist power into an imperialist war, which is what is happening now in the question of Ukraine. Some of the opportunists, principally in Europe, you don't find them in many other places, are actually, and, and of course in America and Canada, who actually regard the present war as an inter-imperialist war. They call themselves super revolutionaries. They're not super revolutionaries. Actually in saying we do not support any side because it's an inter-imperialist war, effectively they're disarming the working class and helping NATO imperialism to wage a war against the Rus Russian Federation and subsequently a war against the People's of Rep Republic of China, which is also in preparation. You can see from the provocations uh, in th that are taking place in the Taiwan Strait, we can see from the trade war that has been launched by, by America and many other imperialist countries against, against China, we can see from the provocative visits by American uh, high-ranking politicians from Nancy Pelosi to various members of, of, of the U, U, US Congress. And this goes against the agreements that United States of America signed with the People's Republic of China before the People's Republic of China joined the United Nations. They agreed that they, there was only one China and it was represented by the People's Republic of China. They withdrew their recognition from the Taiwan government and conferred that recognition to the government in, in, in Beijing. Now, although they say their policy hasn't changed, in effect, it has changed. And they have said they will defend Taiwan if there was a conflict in the Taiwan Strait between People's Republic of China and the reactionary Tai Taiwan province. And what does that mean? That means they do not recognize the indivisibility of China. The question of Taiwan is an internal matter in the People's Republic of China, just as the American Civil War between the Northern and Southern states was an internal question. So the, if, if, if a particular province of China, Taiwan in this case, wants to declare independence, the People's Republic of China is perfectly entitled to deal with that act of separatism. Whatever the opportunists may say, wars cannot be prevented by good manners. They cannot be presented by appealing to the good nature of imperialism. They cannot be prevented by appealing to reason. There are a lot of good uh, commentators on, on, on television and on blogs. They give a good factual information, but in the end, they recommend that America should think twice and should adopt more peaceful and diplomatic methods of solving the problem. But the whole point is, and if you look at the history of imperialism, the transition of capitalism to the stage of imperialism is characterized by intensification of war. And this is because by the time capitalism is transformed into monopoly capitalism, the whole world has been divided. And further division can only take place through redivision, i.e. one power encroaching on the possessions of, of the other. That is why ever since the, this transition, First World War, Second World War, various mini wars, which are not even recorded by uh, the average bourgeois, this, these wars have been going on. They are wars for domination, whether it was a war against the Korean people, Vietnamese, Vietnamese people, 
or the Middle Eastern people, Iraqi people, Afghani people, and Syrian Syrian people, Libyan Libyan people. Wars cannot be ended as long as imperialism is there. And to end imperialism, we have to overthrow imperialism. But in order to overthrow it, we must fight against the fifth column within the working class movement, namely the opportunists. Opportunists are purveyors of bourgeois ideology in the ranks of the working class. They sell the long-term interests of the working class for some short-term gain. And the basis for opportunism is nothing other than super profits garnered by imperialism from the super exploitation of the peoples of oppressed countries of Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Out of these gigantic super profits, a small proportion can be devoted to bribing the upper layers of the working class and the petty bourgeois section of the population. And these bribed layers always act on matters of internal policy as well as in international policy as agents of imperialism on the side of imperialism, or as Lenin put it, Versailles against the coming arts. And unless we fight against opportunism, we cannot defeat imperialism. As Lenin rightly pointed out, the fight against opportunism, the fight, sorry, the fight against imperialism is a humbug and a sham unless it's accompanied by the fight against, against, against opportunism. That is perfectly shown by the successful struggle against opportunism that the Bolsheviks waged against their opportunists in Russia. That's why they were successful in the aftermath of the First World War in making a revolution, whereas the European uh, Social Democratic parties, as they were called, although they were bigger than the, than the Russian party, failed mis mis miserably because they didn't fight against their opportunism and they, in fact, were overwhelmed by opportunism. All in our comrades, I've already probably taken too much of your time. Imperialism sharpens all the contradictions of capitalism. The contradiction between the working class and the proletariat, the contradiction between a handful of imperialist blood-sucking nations and a vast majority of the oppressed countries and, 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 and nations, and of course, inter-imperialist contradictions. Don't get the idea that just because American imperialism is, 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 is bestriding like a colossus over its satellite imperialist countries. But make sure to remember that in the aftermath of the, of, of the war in Ukraine, many of the imperialist countries that has imposed sanctions on Russia, trying to, not to buy gas, trying not to buy petroleum, trying not to trade with Russia, trying to ban uh, Russian officials from visiting any of the imperialist countries and ludicrously speaking, banning anything Russian, including Tchaikovsky's music. What has Tchaikovsky, 100 years ago, a composer of renown to do with the present war? Or Russian plays, Russian literature, you know, Russia produced some of the world historic literature. Is mankind going to be deprived of, of that cultural heritage that a portion of it has brought into, into existence? They're doing that. But these uh, sanctions, instead of bringing Russia to, the, to, the, to its knees and instead of breaking, uh, smashing Russian economy, are beginning to smash Western economies. There are demonstrations everywhere, from Berlin to Prague to Bratislava and a number of other places and people are demanding an end to this war in Ukraine, and they're demanding that the crisis they're facing, the cost of living crisis in the Western countries, where people are unable to pay their energy bills, people are unable to buy food. They have to decide between heating their homes or eating food. food. And sometimes they can't do either of these because there is such a crisis. Crisis not only in imperialist countries, but all, all over the world. And the working class will put pressure on the imperialist countries to actually retrace its steps from, from this war. And when that happens, there is going to be tremendous dissension and possibly breakup of NATO. Not dissension within NATO, 
but breakup of, of NATO. That is coming. And this is testified to even by respectable people <laughs> from the bourgeois uh, section of society, like Colonel uh, um, uh, uh, McGregor, um, who appears on, on, on YouTube many times. So all in all, comrades, there is no need for us to be disheartened. Imperialism, as Lenin rightly pointed out, is the eve of proletarian revolution. And having sharpened all the contradictions and unable to solve the crisis of overproduction, unable to solve the problems of its own people, imperialism is going to, going to crash. And at this point, the question that the working class is to face, as Stalin said, is it's faced with the question of either submit to the diktat of imperialism and eke out a miserable existence as before, or alternatively, adopt a new course, pick up the banner of Marxism, Leninism, and overthrow imperialism. Thank you very much for your for your, for your your invitation, and I wish your anti-imperialist platforms a great success. Thank you very much.